Hello, another week uh, done in AMP2. So we finished taking the endocrine system test and I just wanted to say great job and show you your stats. Uh, the average on the test is 79.12, you know, basically an 80 average on the test. That's uh, really great with, you know, the grades like clustering up, you know, above 75. So uh, excellent job. Keep up the good work. Uh, moving on from the endocrine system, uh, last week we started the blood. I'm not sure how far you got with that because uh, my advice was to, you know, focus on the test and, you know, I hope that you were able to do that. Last week, um, I, I have you starting the blood, the cardiovascular system. Um, this week, I have us moving on to the heart, and so I wanted to focus a little bit more on that. So, um, as I mentioned, now that the test is over and you did a great job on the test, uh, make sure that you understand the composition of the blood, the life cycle of a red blood cell, the way that white blood cells are categorized, uh, what they uh, each uh, type does, um, blood clotting, blood types, ABO and RH factor. Those are the things that pop out to me as far as things that you should really be very familiar with. And then after blood, we move into the heart. So the heart is a brand new chapter in the book. Um, in the notes, it's starting on page eight. So where we leave off with, uh, that's my little figure, um, talking about RH factor and the problems with uh, that RH negative women can experience. Um, this is where I'm starting to talk about the heart. And so just to walk through this with you for a minute, um, this week I have us covering the heart, everything about the heart. So it's a lot. Um, but you'll also hear some of this in lab and hopefully that will help. So I start out by talking about like where the heart is located, the wall of the heart. In other words, you know, the three layers that make up the um, heart. And I did make a detailed video about this. So please take a look at that. And I think that will explain this section of the notes. And then I go through the basic anatomy of the heart, uh, the atria and the ventricles, along with um, some of the anatomy that can be viewed there. And I made two videos about that. So please take a look at those. So after I set up, you know, situate the heart as like a, a four chambered organ, what I do from here is I talk about the valves that are located in the heart. So we have four valves in the heart, uh, two sets of uh, valves. One set are the atrioventricular valves that uh, separate the atria from the ventricles. On the right and on the left, they each have an individual name. But in the notes here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to talk about the structure of the AV valves and how they work. Because the valves, all of the valves of the heart, surprisingly, don't open and close like based on, say, like the nervous system input or anything like that. It's strictly mechanical. So that when the pressure uh, is higher in the atria than it is in the ventricle. Blood just passively moves through that AV valve and blood gathers in the ventricle. And when that happens, that's going to increase pressure in the ventricle. And that increased pressure is going to be the force that shuts the AV valve closed. So that's really what I'm focused on uh, when we look at the valves. Same thing with the semilunar valves that um, are in between the ventricles and the blood vessel that comes after the ventricle. So I talk about the structure of the semilunar valves. The structure is um, different, but they work in the same way in that when ventricular pressure exceeds the blood vessel pressure, uh, blood is going to be passively ejected out of the semilunar valves, and that's going to cause a great um, increase in blood pressure out in the blood vessel, which will close the semilunar valve. Okay, and so... Um, Take a close look at that and make sure you understand how the valves work. I'm here to support you if you need any help. When the valves close, that's what we can hear as a heart sound uh, through a stethoscope. So I'm talking about that. And then I start talking about blood flow. So this um, section where I'm talking about the pulmonary circulation, the systemic circulation, coronary circulation, this path of blood flow, I made this video. Please watch this. It really just goes through... Um, just look at this picture for a second. This kind of thing, understanding that the deoxygenated blood from the um, body is going to enter the heart into the right side, the right atrium, going to the right ventricle, get uh, shuttled out to the lungs. That's what's known as the pulmonary circulation. And then once the blood is oxygenated, after it flows through the lungs, that oxygenated blood returns to the heart on the left-hand side, 
the left atrium, left ventricle, and then gets pushed out to the body. So that's a basic overview of like the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. Please watch the video. I, you know, do a better job explaining it there. Um, but not only do we look at that, okay, the pulmonary circulation, the systemic circulation, uh, we need to know about the coronary circulation, or in other words, the blood flow to the heart itself. So the blood that's flowing through the heart doesn't actually nourish the heart. The heart's just pumping that blood. And so the coronary circulation is, you know, how the heart itself is going to get oxygen and nutrients. Uh, and so that is that. And then uh, what I do next is I talk about the actual muscle of the heart, the myocardium. We looked at cardiac muscle in AP1. So some of this is a review, but what I talk about here is like the unique nature of cardiac muscle cells in that um, they work a little bit like a neuron and that they have a resting membrane potential, uh, which is um, unstable basically. And so because they can't maintain a resting membrane potential, these um, cardiomyocytes, they're always drifting towards threshold. And when they hit threshold, there's gonna be an action potential. And because all of the cardiac muscle cells are interconnected by gap junctions, it's gonna cause the heart to contract. And so this is a really important part about you know, how the heart functions. So this is a little bit of like the anatomic basis of how the heart is gonna function as an organ. So uh, you can see I'm talking about that here, how um, it's gonna work as uh, one unit that's known as a functional syncytium that we're gonna have an organ contraction, not a motor unit contraction like we talked about last semester. And also, if you remember the absolute refractory period, this is an important point. Um, it, it lasts well into the relaxation phase of cardiac contraction, and so we don't see tetany. Okay, that type of contraction is not possible, and how, if it was possible, that could actually kill us, right? Uh, because the heart would just contract and then not relax again. So take a close look at this. Um, after that, uh, and this they cover in lab, so you'll get some backup on this by talking about the intrinsic conduction system. So you should know the intrinsic conduction system uh, and know how that's measured uh, with um, uh, an EKG, know the characteristic waves of an EKG. So all of that we do in lab, extrinsic innervation. So the heart will automatically beat on its own even without nervous input, but what the nervous input does, how the um, nerves will speed up the heart or slow down the heart. And this is where, you know, the information all kind of comes together, the cardiac cycle, because in the cardiac cycle, what we do is we look at the whole heart action for a heartbeat. And so important terms here are knowing, you know, what diastole is, knowing what systole is, how diastole is relaxation of a chamber, and how systole is contraction of a chamber. And so what I do in my notes is I explain it exactly like I would do in class, face to face. And so uh, read through this, and um, I made two videos about this. And then I do an exercise in class too um, that I wanted to tell you about. So um, you'll see in, um, well, I'll show you, in the video playlist for this week, Uh, you can see videos that we're covering. And then also these Pearson videos are great. So please watch these long playlists this week. Like I said, a lot to do. But here's the activity that I do in class. It's this worksheet. It's right on the, it's the last page of your notes. You have this already, or you can download it here. Uh, but in this video, I give the assignment. It's just a short assignment to try to figure out some things. We do this in class, like I said, and then I provide the solution. So you can look at the solution afterwards. In addition, I also take a look at this graph, which is the graph of the cardiac cycle. And so not only should you know like a descriptive um, kind of account of the cardiac cycle, but you should definitely be able to interpret this graph. Um, so that is a lot for this week. Um, wanted to show you one other thing before I finish up today. Uh, if you go into the study area, so let's go into uh, the e-text and study area and uh, go into the Pearson link. Open Pearson. And 
and um, click on study area. And then just to keep this simple, let's go by chapter. And so this week we're focused on the heart. And so there are a lot of things that you can do to practice this material. So here's our e-text. I have a separate link for that, or you can read the e-text right here. But this is what I wanted to draw your attention to, these um, interactive physiology um, activities. And so this is a little bit like a, a one-minute video and then questions, one-minute video and questions. And so I think to go through these interactive physiology um, segments are really, really useful, like definitely uh, worth your time. Okay, so uh, please check out the interactive physiology that's embedded in this chapter. And then um, you might even be interested in this, like for labs, so the art labeling activity, just to show you what that looks like. Uh, you know, you drag and drop uh, the labels. <laughs> so um, anyway, that should um, that's something that could help you out too. So. Uh, have a wonderful week and reach out with any questions. Remember, I'm here on Tuesday mornings and I'm definitely open to making um, another uh, time to, to meet too if that doesn't work for you. Okay, thank you so much.